Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Southeast Radio. My final guest this morning, Joanne Sweeney, has written a book about digital marketing, which has won the approval from one former White House advisor. Joanne joins me now to tell us about the book, Public Sector Marketing Pro, and how it would have prevented Barack Obama's digital advisor from making the same mistakes over many years. But firstly, Joanne, perhaps you can provide us with an insight into your own background. Good morning, Carl, and thank you for having me. So I started my career 20 years ago as a broadcast journalist in Highland Radio. So I come from a local radio background, and you will appreciate the skill set and the platform that that gives you. And I've always had a huge interest in public interest news and stories. So I would have covered the Northwestern Health Boards as they were at the time, local council meetings, um, crime reporting, court reporting, tribunal reporting. We had the Morris Tribunal uh, in Donegal while I was a young journalist. And so this really kind of fulfilled me and I felt that my job was purposeful. I left journalism then, but I never have left communications. And honestly, 20 years on and 14 years self-employed, I feel that I still use my journalistic and my broadcast communication skills every day and back in 2005 I saw the industry of communications and media evolving and digital becoming more prominent and I really made a promise to myself back then that I would evolve my skill set as the industry evolved. I also think was a key move in my career because as things changed I upskilled And I made sure that I could be the teacher and the practitioner uh, that I wanted to be for my clients. And Joanne, why did you feel that there's a need in the market for a digital marketing consultant to assist staff working within the public sector specifically? That is a great question. And, you know, I know loads of people in digital marketing and we collaborate on projects. And up until about five years ago, I would have worked with all types of public, private and non-profit Uh, organizations but I was doing my second master's in digital marketing and interestingly I decided to do the very first primary research on how Angarda Siohana used social media for crime investigation, uh, public relations and in community engagement and I really really enjoyed that piece of work but like academia never sees much light of day so I had an idea to turn all of that insight and broaden the study and I wrote a book six months later um, Law Enforcement and the Social Web and that was a a global study of how police forces across the world are using social media and that book brought me to to, um, the Chiefs of Police Conference in Phoenix, Arizona. The FBI have copies, it's mandatory reading in Canadian police and I think at that stage and that's now about seven years ago something just kind of a light bulb went off in my head saying nobody is writing about this this is really important this is and i used to be the journalist right covering the uh, the story from a mainstream media point of view but these tools are now so valuable for emergency crisis response for for um planning crowd control and for you know missing persons and crime investigation and i said somebody needs to talk about it and I'm hugely interested in it. And I then decided that I would go into it. I guess I felt that policing was a little bit too niche. And then I broadened it to government and public sector. And the rest, they say, is history. But of course, I had to then convince the sector to, to begin to work with me. And how did you go about convincing them? Well, you know and I know that in order to work with government and public sector, you need huge credibility. You need evidence that you say who you are and the work that you do um, meets a very, very high standard. And so being an intuitive digital marketer as well, I decided to create a sub-brand. So my company is Digital Training Institute, but I felt that I needed a brand that spoke to the sector. So I created public sector marketing institute so almost like an offshoot of my main business and i created the public sector digital marketing summit the first conference dedicated to digital marketing for this sector i began to do more primary research so i produced the state of social media reports 
in government and public sector. So that was an investigation of how Ireland's public sector is using social media. And um, then I decided it was time for another book. So as well as practice, I was answering all the questions that they used to pose to me. How does social media in government compare to private sector? What's our benchmark? Is there different language? How should we be doing it? We're not selling a product. And I just decided, well, you know, I'm interested in this and I've got the knowledge. I'm going to to write the books and do the studies. And that organically, genuinely, that organically and my content on the Internet and I have a podcast, the Public Sector Marketing Show, they began, began to find me and follow my work. So I would teach them for free. And then if they wanted anything more spoke, they'd then, you know, reach out or I'd go through the tender process, whatever. And really, it was that organic. And Joanne, from your own insights into public sector organisations, how do our public sector organisations compare to their international counterparts when it comes to their use of social media? They're actually doing very, very well. Um, Obviously, there's particular cohorts of government and public sector in Ireland that are doing well. So if I look at policing, public health, higher education, local government, um, and then government departments, they are doing very well. They would use it as fundamental channels to communicate with the public. And just over a week ago, I released a study on the state of TikTok in government and public sector. And this was a study of 100 TikTok accounts from across the world. And a number of accounts that polled very, very highly in that study were the HSE and Garda Shihana, publicjobs.ie. So they are very intuitive when it comes to social, but they realise that the public have an expectation. You know, you think of Netflix, Amazon, Starbucks, Apple, those big brands. We as consumers, right, we access all the information that we want from those brands at the touch of a button through our smartphone. And as citizens, we expect our public services also to be intuitive and that we can access our public services online or get information on social. And so, you know, they, they are realising that. And of course, we're, we're just out of a pandemic and, and, and that shifted everything dramatically. And how does the approach to digital marketing differ between the public sector and the private sector? So when I teach and design my courses, there's, there's a very different language that's used. So in digital marketing for business, you'd hear a lot about e-commerce and customer funnels. Whereas when you step into the world of public sector and government communications, you're talking about citizen engagement and public interest messaging. And that's such a good question because when I wrote the first edition of this book three years ago, I got a LinkedIn notification and it was a book review written on LinkedIn by a senior executive working with governments in Facebook. And he said about my book, he said, I did not realise there was a whole different narrative and language that should be used in relation to public sector marketing. But Joanne has captured it really well in this book. And that's the whole thing. There's a different approach, there's different language and there's different objectives and outcomes, but everything is done from the place of the public and putting the citizen first. And that's the type of digital marketing that I teach. Um, my my North Star in everything that I do, um, and when people are talking to me and deciding whether they want to work with me, I say that what I teach is in the public interest and you must demonstrate trust and transparency and be very open with your communication. So I'm very clear on my approach and I expect those that work with me to be equally committed to to open communication. The foreword of your new book is written by Tom Cochran, the Chief Digital Advisor to the White House under the Obama administration. And he describes the content as the guide that he needed in the White House to save him years of mistakes. Tell us about Tom and what you learned from him. So Tom is fantastic and he actually came over to Ireland to speak at my conference and book launch over a week ago. And he reached out to me about four years ago when I was having my first summit and asked me, could I speak at it or could he speak at it? But I already had the agenda full. But we started this conversation because we had a common denominator and a common interest. And Tom says that when Barack Obama came into the White House, and 
in the first edition of the book three years ago, and then he updated his forward for this edition, he actually brings us into the White House and he talks about the Open Government Directive. Barack Obama, in his first week, said to all his staff, and back then in 2011, the White House was not digitized in any way, and Tom and his colleagues were leading that out. But he said, we must produce government communications how the public want us to deliver it and not what suits us. And so he really set down the mantle and the direction for open and transparent government in the public interest. And so Tom worked with him for a number of years and then subsequent to that in the US State Department. So I feel it's a valuable aid um, and it's a must read. And there's 20 years of my research academia and practice in the book and again my whole rationale for this is that we as citizens have better communication from our government and public sector because after all they exist and they work in the public interest and trust is really important right now I mean the erosion of of trust and the erosion of our democracies is a real threat and so Tom now works as consultant in the US you know working still around Washington DC and um he is still, again, like me, flying the flag for great digital communication. And what are the common mistakes, which Tom alludes to, that organisations typically make when it comes to digital marketing? Number one, they don't have a strategy and they think about digital first as potentially a, a secondary approach, maybe to mainstream communications. It's hugely under-resourced. So a lot of the case studies that I have in the book are operating on very, very, very small teams, um, but they are doing great work. And you know, by working in radio and in media, that every crisis can be averted with great calms or any crisis can be overcome with great calms. And so the underinvestment in comms is also another thing. And then thirdly, it's senior leadership's fear of getting critiqued and getting criticism from the public and so they're a bit more cautious and reserved about you know going all out online but again that's where your strategy and your guidelines and your protocols and your standard operating procedures come in and if you equip your team with um, the tools that they need to do their job with the capacity in terms of a, a big enough team and then having the blessing of senior leadership to allow those comms professionals to really find the the boundaries and the digital lines of engagement um then you know you can you can really embrace and also be that single source of truth online because disinformation is a huge problem and in the book I talk about the absence of a government and a public sector voice on matters that concern them and concern citizens is actually contri- contributing to the spread of disinformation because if you're not there to correct the record then those who have ulterior motives can just rise to the top of the internet. And Joanne, has the pandemic accelerated the public's expectations of social media content from public bodies? Yeah, you're spot on, Carl. In fact, Google say that digital transformation and public expectation has been expedited by a whole decade in under two years because everything went online as we were all physically locked down. Messaging and WhatsApp and video calls increased by over 70%. And honestly, government and public sector showed their agility and really did a 180 turn and they reacted positively. But now there's an opportunity to build on that because the public expectation of the level of comms during COVID, that still exists. So they can't now not retreat. So what I say in the book is, you know, take the elevator to the next digital level, take the great learnings from the pandemic and put them into where you're going next. And of course, for many government agencies and public bodies more generally, they're communicating with so many different age profiles. So what advice have you got for them in that regard? Quite simply, they have to firstly step into the shoes of the citizen um, and segment their audiences according to to need and, of course, to demographic profiling like age, gender, location. And then secondly, they have to create just-like-me content. So if you have um, 
you know, uh, an ask about alcohol campaign happening by the HSE, then they have to target that accordingly to different demographics with different messages, messaging. Mass marketing does not work on the internet. People are looking for personalized content that really resonates with them. So it's all about the relevance. So spending some time thinking about your audience segmentation and having great messaging that resonates with them and then choosing your channels and investing money in in digital advertising is a good plan of action. And in terms of the leading lights in public sector, what agencies or organisations can you point to? Well, I have to call out the HSE. They turned their Twitter account into a customer service channel and only in the past uh, week have reached quarter of a million followers and they now use their Twitter account as a dedicated customer service channel. Um, we also had um, and Garda Siakana who also now have extended their social media presence to Instagram, multiple Twitter accounts, Facebook pages and they are really pushing out um, you know, community engagement and policing content to citizens. Um, and then we have higher education who do great work engaging the youth um, and adults in terms of postgraduate programmes. And I'd also like to call out local government. Our county councils and our city councils are doing great work. They realise the timeliness and the immediacy of um, social media. And, you know, we've had terrible weather over the past couple of days and you know you look at any county council channel and they'll tell you where there's trees down where there's flooding or you know of areas that we need to avoid so I, I think uh, in Ireland they're doing good but of course there's there's always room to improve and to match that public expectation. What are your thoughts on the use of personality or even humour in content that's flowing from public sector organisations across social media? Well Carl humour is subjective what I find funny, you might find offensive. So you, you certainly need to be careful. However, people are online, you know, to pass time to be entertained. And in Garda Shihana, that's in their strategy. Because when I did my master's all those years ago, they told me that they deliberately add humor and, you know, take the mick out of themselves because they want to humanize uh, who they are and they want the public to feel that they're very, very approachable. Another agency that are really good with humour are Dublin Fire Brigade. They are excellent and humour is one of their pillars. But you've got to be able to do humour well. So make sure that you've got um, talent in your team uh, for that. Joanne, finally, what are the three key takeaways from your new book, Public Sector Marketing Pro? So number one is the talent that exists within public sector and government Do not fire them. Equip them with new skills. Their intuitiveness of working in public sector is still as relevant today as it was 20 years ago. But you've got to upskill them. They have about 95% of the skills that they need, but you need to equip them with the digital skills. Secondly, um, senior leadership need to lead by example. So they need to show up online on their social networks in a professional capacity. And then thirdly, Digital comms is everyone's responsibility. So you you shouldn't just be responsible if you've got media or communications in your job title. We have subject matter experts who have messaging and information that needs to get out to the public. And we saw that through the pandemic. If I think of, you know, somebody like Colm Henry, who was on our screens and on our radio stations, and we trusted him because he was a subject matter expert. And when he spoke, we listened. So get the people within your organisation to have a profile and to share their, their messages online. Well, if you've just tuned in, that was Joanne Sweeney, the author of Public Sector Marketing Pro, and I wish her every success with her new book. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Southeast Radio.